Hi, and welcome to Cyberry.it. My name's Anthony, and I'm your local subject matter expert here for Network Plus, and today we're going to be talking about the purpose and properties of routing and switching. So what is switching and routing? Well, when we have network data that we need to transfer to other devices, when we're trying to send or receive files from another device or na navigate through the internet or connect out to the internet, we can't just take a cable and connect it from our computer to wherever we want to go. That'd be very inconvenient, to say the least. Uh, every time we're trying to connect to another computer or connect to another server, if it wasn't for routing and switching, we would have to take our computer and plug in a cable and go around the world to whatever server we were trying to connect to and plug in there. And that'd be very inconvenient. Even in that, even in that case, we would still need some devices like repeaters in order to boost our signals so we could actually travel that far distance over our cable. But nonetheless, to prevent us from having to do that, we have devices that allow us to route and switch. Well, what is routing and switching? Back to our original question. Um, uh, routing and switching allows us to connect network uh, allows us to connect devices and communicate over a network. Whether this network is our own internal network or it's across multiple networks around the world, routing and switching is what allows us to take a packet, take a, uh, take a piece of data, and transmit it from one network to another computer, whether it's right next to us or around the world, without having to individually take cables and plug a cable directly from one computer to another. Um, this allows us to connect to devices such as routers and switches and hubs and repeaters and bridges and get our signal wherever it needs to go. So when we hear the term switching, we're talking about transmitting data on the same network. We're taking data and we're transmitting it to a computer that uh, is right next to us or is in the same office. Essentially a computer that's on our same IP address network or a computer that we can reach directly by its MAC address. These are going to be computers that we can reach by devices such as hubs or uh, switches. When we're talking about routing, we're talking about our layer three of our OSI model. When we're routing data, we're actually taking data and we're moving it from one network to a different network. Different networks may have different topologies and different networks may move data different ways. So we need to be able to have devices which know what our internal network looks like and is able to receive and send data to other networks in a standardized way so that that other network's device, that other network's router can take that standardized data and send it across its network topology. So that's what routing allows us to do. So switching would be our same network, our local network, whereas routing would be sending it around on different on the different networks or traversing different networks. So we need to understand our devices that move our data. We need to know what devices perform these functions, our switching and our routing. Well, our major devices that we're going to talk about, and then our one big device that we're going to talk about a lot, are right up here. So we have our hubs, switches, routers, multi-layer switches, bridges, and repeaters. Um, we're going to talk about our hubs, switches, multi-layer switches, bridges, and repeaters right now and our routers are going to be the ones that we're going to spend a long time on. Um, some of the topics we mentioned with our routers may also apply to some of our other components but routers are uh, very complex and the way they talk and they move data is very complex. Um, we will also mention in this section uh, we'll talk about uh, spanning tree protocol uh, for uh, bridges mostly but uh, spanning tree protocol will come up uh, a little bit later while we're talking about routers. Uh, we'll just mention, we'll, we'll talk about, we'll mention it now, and even though it applies mostly to bridges, we'll also talk about it more in depth then. Our first device that we're going to talk about is a hub. Now, a hub is a device that sends and that receives from anyone that's connected to it, and it sends out to anybody. Uh, we typically refer to hubs as being dumb. They're essentially just glorified repeaters. All they do is they take data from one port. So if we have our hub here and our computer, and ooh, no idea why I drew a triangle. And we have our first computer here, another computer here, and a third computer here. And we send a data packet from computer A wanting it to get to computer B with computer C over here not really in the mix. 
Computer A will send a packet to the hub, and the hub will then take that packet and it may do some signal regeneration on it and may do some amplification amplification may amplify the signal a little bit which we'll talk about with repeaters the difference there but essentially that hub is going to take that packet and then say okay here you go and give it to everybody that's connected to it except the port that sent it to it so the hub is going to send its data the data that a sends and it's going to send it to b and it's going to send it to c now that packet was meant for b why did it send it to c well like we said hubs are dumb they don't inspect the packet. They don't inspect which MAC address it's for. They don't inspect which IP address it's for. They just take the packet and send it to every port except the one that it's on. Now, when we talk about, uh, we mentioned that our hubs also per may perform functions as a repeater. Um, I said that hubs are simply almost glorified repeaters because repeaters, all they do is they take data, uh, they take a signal and they change it in some way so that it can keep going down the same uh, the same path it can keep going it's completely unmodified other than the signal itself uh, it doesn't change the packet it doesn't change the data it just either cleans it up or it makes it stronger so it can keep going down the cable hubs kind of do the same thing except they push the, da the, the data in multiple directions. We may send a packet to a hub, it may clean, it up, it may clean up the signal a little bit, it may uh, amplify it so it can keep going down lengths of cable, but it's just gonna send it to everybody that it's connected to except the party that originally sent the packet. It's not gonna send it back out the same port that it came in. So with our hubs, it's up for our individual computers who are connected to the hub to decide if they're going to take that data and use it or not. Now, this is insecure, and it's very easy to see why. If we have anyone in our network who wants to know or wants to listen in on what we're doing and we're using a hub, all they have to do is plug into the hub. If we don't have any security on it, if we, we don't have any additional lockdowns in place to prevent people from just listening in on our data, if our data isn't encrypted in any way, um, if this is all open in the clear, Anything we send to our hub, our hub is just going to send to anybody that's connected to it. So if an intruder comes in and just plugs a computer into our hub, or if someone who's already connected to our hub just starts and launches a program such as Wireshark, which captures these packets and listens in on our traffic, they'll be able to hear everything that's going to anybody. Uh, they just have to sit there and they just listen to it. So hubs are not very are not very secure, especially when we're comparing them with our uh, with our switches with our, our switches and our multi-layer switches. Uh, so typically, if you, we have hubs in our environment and we can replace them, uh, we may want to look at replacing them because they are devices which have uh, severe limitations when we compare them with our other devices, such as our switches and our multi-layer switches. Now we have our icon up here. Uh, this is our typical icon that we may see when we are using, when we're creating a network diagram or when we're viewing a network diagram. Our network diagrams being some of those little diagrams which you've seen me draw, draw out already where we can see what, what computers connect to what devices and how our network talks. Well, rather than labeling every single one of those devices if we're sketching it out or doing it on a whiteboard or sketching it on a sheet of paper, what we typically want to do is we want to use different indicators. We want to use different icons for those devices so we know uh, sort of in a shorthand way what those devices are. Our hubs, if you see a box with an arrow, a single arrow pointed in a single direction, that's typically going to be our hubs. Um, so keep an eye on those and if you're looking at a network diagram and you see that, then that typically may be what that particular icon means. It's, it's a hub. Now our next device is a switch. Now our switches are a step up from our hubs in that our switches are a smart hub. Our switches actually track MAC addresses and which port they're on. So if we have our diagram from earlier, but this time we have our switch. Computer A is plugged into our switch. Computer B is plugged into our switch. And computer C is plugged into our switch. The first couple seconds, the first minute that our switch, that our computers are plugged into our switch, our switch operates as if it's a hub. Because when we first plug in our switch to our devices, our switch doesn't know who anybody is. It 
it doesn't know what MAC address is assigned to which port. So the first couple of seconds it's turned on, our switch is listening to all the data which is being sent to it by these different ports. And then as it's starting to receive data and it's starting to notice, OK, computer A with this particular MAC address is sending to this port. It, I'm getting data from MAC address A coming onto this port. So that means that I'm going to assign uh, computer A is plugged into port 1. So in my table here, I'm going to link port 1 with computer A. Listens for a couple, a couple more uh, hundredths of a second and it notices that computer B is sending to port 2. So it's going to listen its record that port 2 corresponds with MAC address B. And then computer C, it sees is plugged into port 3. So it recognizes that port 3 is MAC address C. After it's developed this table, then our switch will begin to send data to those corresponding ports when packets are being sent to those particular computers. So if computer A sends a packet that's specifically designated for computer B, after our, if our switch has recognized and has made those assignments, those port assignments, our switch will receive the packet and say, OK, this packet is meant to go to computer B. Let me look at my table. OK, I, oh, this packet is meant to go to this MAC address, and this MAC address is for computer B. And I have this MAC address as being on port 2. So I'm going to send this packet on through port 2. Now, we can immediately see how our switches are going to be more secure than our hubs. Because we can still plug in all of our devices, but now our switch is sending, the de are sending our packets only to the devices that need to have it, or only sending the packets to the devices that correspond with those ports. So not only is this more secure, but this also helps with our network traffic. This helps with mitigating sending out too much network traffic and reducing the number of collisions that, we, that, that happen. Uh, collisions are events that occur when we have more than one device trying to talk at the same time. And we have collisions that occur, and packets can't get what they need, where they need to go. With hubs, there's a lot more chance for collisions, because the hubs are constantly just spewing information out to everybody. As soon as they receive a packet in, they're just pushing it out to everybody. Switches reduce the amount of collisions and increase our security, because our switches are only going to send packets to who they need to be directed to. So it reduces the amount of talk on our network, it reduces the amount of collisions, and it increases our security, because we can't just have a computer, a computer D plug in here and start listening in. Uh, after our switch has figured out that this MAC address is with this port, and uh, there are ways that MAC addresses can be spoofed, so this isn't 100% foolproof. Um, but as soon as our computer, or, sorry, our switch has determined that, OK, this computer, this MAC address is on this port, then this com com computer D is running Wireshark, and hey, I'm, I don't seem to be seeing all the traffic that I used to when this enterprise used to have a hub here. Well, that's because this switch is smart, and this switch is only sending you the packets that, you, that need to be your, to, uh, to your attention. This switch is only sending you packets that are either broadcast packets or are packets directly meant for you. Um, broadcast are packages meant directly for you, things that would go to either everybody or just to you. So you're going to see a lot less traffic on a switch if you're running something like a Wireshark program than you would if you were connected to a hub. But if we're doing this, if we're listening in on a port on a switch for, um, dot, or if we're listening in for actual diagnostic purposes, if we're trying to listen in to traffic on a switch in order to figure out what's going on on our network, there are ways that we can set up ports on switches called uh, mirrored ports. We can set up port mirroring, or what we do is we're telling our switch, OK, I'm plugging in a device onto this particular port that I want you to send the data from these other specific ports or all of these ports, and I want you to send all the traffic that you're sending between all of these ports, and I want you to copy that traffic and also send it over here. 
these mirrored ports provide or these mirrored ports provide us with a mirror of what's going on on the other ports so that we can see what's going on and s see if we can diagnose some network issues uh, but we'll also talk about port mirroring a little bit later but it's, it's good to get into that it's good to mention it now so that we understand that just because we're using a switch doesn't mean that we can't plug in computers and use diagnostic devices in order to see network data that's going on on our switch